Good morning, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. I want to share with you a little of an email that I got from a beloved brother. And of course, uh, I asked permission of this brother to read uh, a portion of this email that he sent. Um, quote, going to alter a few words in this, just so you know, but, quote. So the Lord has made me notice that I may have some unconscious tension that may be affecting my health negatively. They, <laughs> children forced to wear them. People dying from being stabbed. And people I know getting them. Now they want to go after the children too. You know, raise up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. Yeah, yeah. That is their main goal, to go after the children, the generation that is coming up. Okay, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Now they want to go after the children too. The lockdowns. The looks of the lost when you walk on the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello, brother. Amen. Yeah. Who of you of the Church of the Living God has experienced that? Yeah. Knowing their demise, but also knowing they won't listen. Sometimes I just want to yell at them that they are being deceived and that they are on their way to hell. And even if I try to witness to some people, <laughs> they just don't believe you. <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only the other day, I was sending a gospel tract I made to some of my contacts, and an old friend from school seemed to be interested, but aside from that, everyone turns you down. Yeah, we are seeing the fulfillment of 2 Timothy chapter 3 right before our eyes. Every single day that you're out there, brethren, Every single day, I can't see that. Every single day you're out there, okay? Remember, you are ambassadors unto our Lord Jesus Christ. You, are, you have the ministry of reconciliation, and you also have the word of reconciliation as well. The Lord is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay, you have to never forget this when you go outside your door. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof from such. Turn away. We know the scriptures say this. But when you encounter it. Right? <laughs> Reading from this. Beautiful email. I don't really notice it. I don't feel too worried or anxious, but it seems all the tension from the situation is day by day getting a little to me. <laughs> hey! Yeah. 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 Like I say to uh, my uh, best friend, our brother, um, we got jackets for that club, brother. 
Yeah. Yeah. Any of you feel like that, huh? Huh? Any of you out there? Church of the Living God? Um, can you feel what this brother is talking about? Huh? Can you, can you, um, can you associate yourself with that? Hmm? I have to try to relax more. Oh, brother, what shall the end of these things be? So much wickedness, so much ignorance, and that willful ignorance as well. <clears throat> and it will only get worse. If it wasn't because of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah, I don't know what would have been of me. Only Him can give us strength and comfort during these terrible times. And to that I say, amen. And to that I say, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Very appropriate email that uh, a beloved brother of mine, your brother, sent me. Um, very telling. Very telling. And yes, that's how it is. And yes, it's just going to get worse. And for the rest of that email, brother, thank you. Thank you. I bet you weren't th as, uh, expecting me to be speaking on that part of your email, did you? This is what the Lord will have me to speak about. Turn to Psalm 78. Going after the children. Oh, these kids today. Yeah. Yeah. Desensitized. <laughs> Desensitized onto truth. Trained to accept violence through video games majority of them raised now upon these things given on to Jesuits to teach them because mommy and daddy are way too busy right <clears throat> Psalm 78 verses 1 on to verse 8 give ear O my people to my law Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. Now stop right there. The generations that are coming, okay, the generation that is being brought up right now, even the generations of way back when, have they been being brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Has not what is deemed Christendom been so watered down so diluted, so perverted, it isn't even the faith of Christ at all, but a shoe? Hmm? Where's the gen where are the fathers teaching the children? Hmm? Verse 4, We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and His strength, and his wonderful works that he hath done. Now there are today very few who are handing that on to their children. Perfect example. Uh, Brian Denlinger and Kath uh, Catherine Denlinger teaching their son Oliver um, the ways of the Lord at such a young age. Also uh, some brethren up in Canada that I know. Uh, training their two sons in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay? Absolutely. There are those who are teaching their children the ways of the Lord through the Scripture.
But on the whole, as we all know, God has been taken out of the equation. And they are their own gods. They love themselves. See. Let's continue. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Who are supposed to teach children? Daddy and mommy. Okay? Daddy and mommy. According to scripture. You do not see anywhere in scripture people sending them off. Okay? Okay? The kids. The kids. Okay? You got Paul who was uh, learned from Gamaliel. Yes. You have that uh, as far as the Pharisees are concerned. But when it comes to kids, raise up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. Okay? See? Daddy and mommy are supposed to raise the children. Okay? Okay? Not send them off to some place where they could be trained by Jesuits. Verse 6. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Daddy and mommy are supposed to be the ones to raise the children, okay? Children, you raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Not sending them off to a Jesuit school. All the schools are Jesuit run in one way or another, okay? But see what is happening because the children are being shipped off to these public, private schools, okay? What are they learning? Evolution. Okay? The learning evolution. They're being raised against God. Puffed up, self important. Okay? To believe the government and all things. Um, I, I think it was that Barbarians, the New Order of Barbarians, I believe it was in, where. Um, Children, a uh, part of the Jesuit order's plan was to teach the children to make the children look at the government as daddy and mommy. And in America, is that not the case today? See, the people that you and I are encountering, encountering out there, brother, sister, have been conditioned by the removal of God from the equation and being indoctrinated through the Jesuit order and everything that they're learning in the school system. Okay? We are seeing the fruit of that today. Hence, when you go outside your door, verse 7, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of, his, of God, but keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Ah, yes. A generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. And that is that generation that has raised this generation that is coming up right now that you and I are mostly encountering. Look at verses 29. Now, skip a little. Go to verse 29. Verse 29. So they did eat and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire. Got to be careful what you ask the Lord for. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him. 
and they turn and they returned and inquired early after God. I heard this once before and I've never forgotten it. You want to get someone praying unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You want to get someone to believe on God. Put them on a sinking submarine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put them in the most desperate of situations. But there again, okay, they, they turn to God and God who is merciful, long-suffering, slow to anger, gracious, gives them a little respite. Are they like Pharaoh? And after he sees there is respite, and goes and goes back? And that bids the question also, are they actually praying on to the Lord? Or are they praying on to that man of sin, the son of perdition? You know, Satan, who is answering their prayers for them. Oh, something to consider. Let's continue. Verse 34. When he slew them, then they sought him, and they returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock, and the high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues, for their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh. A wind that passeth away and cometh not again. You and I are nothing. Man is, what is man? He's insignificant. He's nothing. Okay? God has every right, if he so wanted to, if he so chose, to eradicate everything. Start over. He, he has the right to do that. But see, those of you who are playing around, those of you who are lost, those of you devil coadjutors who are already serving Satan, you've made your choice, you're damned to go to hell anyway. But those of you who are playing games, do you really know? You have no idea who you're messing with when you're messing with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. See, he, right here, for he remembered that they were but flesh. A wind that passeth away and cometh not again. Verse 40. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. It is only God's mercy, His long suffering, that if you are not saved and you are drawing breath today, that He has given you today, that hopefully you might reach after the Lord. Hopefully. Hopefully. But see, that is the, gener the generation that we are facing today has been indoctrinated to be against the Lord. We all know that. We all know that. Okay? But what are we supposed to do with the, uh, an ungrateful generation? Hmm? What are we to do as the church of the living God? You know, the doors ain't closed yet, <laughs> but they are closing. Go to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, 
We will be reading verses 23 on to the close of the chapter. Now, this is when Abraham stands before the Lord. The three uh, came to Abraham. Uh, two of them were angels. One of them was the Lord himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, precarnate form of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? God our Father it was Jesus, okay? And note what Abraham is doing. Let's begin at verse 23, and we're going to be reading on to the close of the chapter, okay? And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare? Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Hmm. And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all that city for the lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it, if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way. As soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Abraham was acting as the intercessor, was he not? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. We are called, brethren, to make intercession. Okay? Go to 1 Timothy, chapter 2. 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Okay? 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. In all godliness and honesty. That is why we are to pray for kings and authority. That we may what? Lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. How do you live godly? Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Okay? This is how you live godly. You live according to the scriptures. Okay? And you are to pray, what does he say there? For kings and for all that are in authority, so that, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. 
that we may live our lives according to the scriptures as ambassadors, okay, as ministers of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation unto the lost, okay? Verse 3, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have, Mr. Calvin, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That ain't Mary. Okay? There's only one mediator. Our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. There's only one mediator. You don't go to Mary, <laughs> Catholic, because Jesus is so hard to approach onto. That's what they teach you. That's what they teach you with the mediatrix heresy. Okay? The Queen of Heaven, Diana of the Ephesians, also known as Semiramis. Okay? Be aware of that, Catholic. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all all to be testified in due time. Okay? God would have all men to be saved. Mr. Calvin. Okay? And there's only one mediator. Our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Okay? He is the only way. Very exclusive. Okay? But now go to Romans chapter 12. But before we before you go to Romans chapter 12, we are to pray for our government, kings and uh, and all that are in authority, again, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Okay? In all godliness and honesty. That we may live our lives according to the scriptures to be the ambassadors that we are called to be in the ministry of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation. Okay? But now go to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Very familiar verses unto you. They ought to be. Okay? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? And then now when you go back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, okay? Right there. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Or verses 1 and 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4 who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Okay? And we do that by adhering our lives to the scriptures. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? This is why the lost world hates you. Okay? Because you are of Him. You are of the church of the living God. This is why the lost world hates you. This is why you feel so out of place, out of touch with people. You're supposed to. Okay. You're supposed to. But now go to Romans 13. Romans 13. 
Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Yes! Using America as the example, Trump was ordained of God to bring in judgment upon this nation. Kamala Harris is ordained of God. Never mind, smoking joke. Kamala Harris is ordained of God to bring judgment upon America. Okay? America, like I've said before, my nation, America, is gone. Okay? The people that are here that were selected by the Jesuits are, are ordained of God for his judgment to come upon this nation. Okay? Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Doing that which is good, okay? How do you explain verse 3? Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Okay? For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, separate, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be like the world to win the world. Okay? <laughs> but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, who are you proving this to? To yourself? No. You're an ambassador for our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, you are a minister of reconciliation. Having the word of reconciliation, remember? For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now, take that verse right there, okay? The powers that be are ordained of God. Trump, ordained for judgment to come upon this nation. Kamala Harris, ordained, allowed, chosen by the Jesuits to bring in judgment upon this nation. Okay? Yes. Yes. Our government calls evil good and good evil. Yesterday, which was the 13th, in my town here of Woodstock, Illinois, up on the square, the Pride Parade happened yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. As we were driving, we saw little teenage girls with signs, rainbow, let love, and all this stuff. Yeah. 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 See, th that this generation that we are encountering, brethren, is that generation that has been told evil is good and good is evil. Okay? A generation whose teeth are swords and knives that don't honor their mother and father. Okay? Okay? Their father and mother, excuse me. They don't honor their parents. The government is daddy and mommy to them. Just like the Jesuits wanted it to be. And I, I reckon it's the same in your nation, wherever you are. Isn't that right? Verse 5. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. 
For this, for, for this cause be pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Now, for example, the <laughs> a lot of people would have said, well, Jesus would want you. <laughs> no, he would not. No, he would not. Because in the book of Leviticus, chapter 13, our Lord gives the prescription on how to deal with such things. Okay? You go ahead and read uh, Leviticus chapter 13 on your own time. Okay? That has not changed. That is how you were to deal with, um, with sickness, a disease of that nature that spread to... Um, throughout your civilization or whatever, okay? The answer was given to us in Leviticus chapter 13. And you were to go to the priest, okay? Not a Jesuit priest, but you were to go to the priest. And who is our priest today? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? Keep that in mind. See, when a nation establishes laws that are contrary to the scriptures. What do you do? An example. Abortion. Legalized murder. Thou shalt not kill. Okay? Thou shalt not kill. Okay? Pride Day, that was yesterday. Open sodomite marriage. Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil. But see, America, this nation, we have Kamala Harris, who is a Jesuit, in charge of things. Like I said, forget smoking Joe. Okay? Never mind that guy. All right? We have Kamala Harris, who is in office, selected by the Jesuits, to bring judgment upon America. Okay? That is why she is there. Ordained of God. Because God is going to destroy America. But he hasn't yet. Why is that? Hold your place here. Go back to Genesis 18. Why is that? And this, this is something that you have to remember too. This is something that you always have to remember. Genesis chapter 18, if I can get back there again. Genesis chapter 18, verse 25. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? See, the church of the living God is still on the earth. Again, there is still a chance that some of you, being broken and contrite, going on to the Lord Jesus Christ, crying out for His mercy that He may save you, you have a chance today. You have that chance today. But see, the reason why I truly believe America has not been destroyed yet is because there is still the Church of the Living God, a very small remnant presence here in America that is letting, letting its destruction. That's what I believe. The government that we have is, not, is ordained of God to bring in judgment. And the statutes and the laws that our government is instituting is contrary to the scripture. <clears throat> Verse 7 in Romans chapter 13. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom Fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. In other words, pay your taxes. Owe no man anything but to love one another. 
For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Owe no man anything. Don't be in debt. Don't be in debt. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill abortion. Look at this, okay? This, these are the commandments for us today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, to the Jew first and also to the uh, Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, being with someone other than your wife or your husband, okay? Take it a step further, going to serve other gods such as yourself rather than serving the Lord Jesus Christ, God your Father. And if you're not saved, you're lost watching this, Jesus Christ is your God, whether you like that or not. Okay? But thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Outright murder and abortion. Thou shalt not steal. Theft. Also, uh, people who take advantage of, say, welfare and government money and stuff like that. Okay? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Anytime you watch any of these politicians, these Jesuit politicians, that's all they're doing is bearing false witness. Okay? And hey, by the way, you don't have the authorized version of the scriptures, right? Uh, where is where it says, thou, sh uh, thou shalt not bear false witness? You're reading like an NIV or an ESV or an American Standard. Or the legacy Bible, <laughs> whereas thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt not bear false witness. Yeah. yeah. Thou shalt not covet. Greedy. Wanting things of the world. I gotta have. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And if there be any other commandments, it is briefly comprehended in the same. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Amen to that, huh? The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Okay? This is why here back in 1 Timothy chapter 2, this is why, okay, verses 1 and 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Verse 13 in Romans 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wanting, wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. It's actually pretty simple when you get right down to it, brethren. Okay? We are to be intercessors. Yes. 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 We are to pray. We are to pray as intercessors. There are those out there right now as you and I sit here. There are those out there somewhere hopefully in America or your nation, someone might get saved today, come to the Lord broken and contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, 
call upon him that he might have mercy upon that man or woman and that the Lord save them. We want to get out of here yesterday. But you, you can never forget this. Think about when the Lord saved you. Are you not glad that the, the Lord waited just that one extra day that you might be saved? Put that into the equation, brethren. Who today will the Lord save that wasn't saved yesterday? And that person, spirit, soul, and body be so grateful knowing that the Lord saved him before he redeemed his purchased possession. Think about that. Think about that. Okay. Now, now look at uh, Genesis chapter 19, verses 15 on to verse 25. And when the morning arose, Genesis 19, verses 15 on to verse 25. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Okay? A type, this is, an example of a type of the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? This is a type. A type. God removing the righteous before destruction come. Okay? And notice in verse 33 in Genesis 18, okay, the Lord left off when Abraham had gotten it down to 10. If the Lord would have found 10 righteous men in Sodom, he would have spared it. But as it turns out, only Lot was the, the only righteous one, the only just man there. Okay, And Peter, uh, in one of the books of Peter, I think it's... Uh, First Peter, where just Lot, that righteous man, vexed it with the conversation of the wicked. Okay? So this is a type. But there again, like I said in the previous video, the angels took him out. Okay? The angels. The Lord himself didn't say, come on up. Okay? Check the last video. Uh, the previous video about that. But let's continue. Okay. Verse 16. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass that, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. Look at this. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city, for the which, for, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar, little one. Look at that verse. I cannot do anything till thou come hither. Look at Genesis chapter 18, verse 25. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And remember, God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation from our Lord Jesus Christ. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, excuse me. Okay? To 
be redeemed for the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah. Yeah. The sun, verse 23 in Genesis 19. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. So he destroyed them. But he waited until Lot had gotten out of the city. But until the destruction of Sodom, Abraham was making intercession for Sodom. Granted, it was most likely because he knew Lot was there, yes, but still making intercession. And those who were of the Lord, he got them out of there. Do you see? Now go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. Eat this roll. Okay? Take it in. Down to your gut ingest the word not literally okay see the Catholics tell you that you know the priest has uh, through transubstantiation that he has the power to go woody 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 and make the thing actual flesh blood toenails ha uh, eyeballs hair guts of the Lord Jesus Christ in a little sun shaped cookie and that the wine actually becomes the blood yeah cannibalism cannibalistic mm -hmm. No, okay. We are to take in. We are to eat the word. Gobble it up. Not literally. But to read it. To live it. To adhere to it. Okay. We are to adhere our lives unto the scriptures. Okay. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man. Cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Now see, he actually did eat the roll. <laughs> he did. He did. But see, for our instruction of in righteousness, like I said, we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, that we being workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are to live our lives according to the scriptures. We are to live the scriptures okay to hide his word within your heart you know so that you sin not against him to have his word within you see verse 4 and he said unto me son of man go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them for thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Now, skipping a little here in Ezekiel chapter um, in Ezekiel chapter 3, okay? <clears throat> Let us read verses 22 on to verse 27. 
And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river of Kibar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Now you think about that. Okay? Verse four, uh, 24. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go shut thyself within thine house. Okay? But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, not being able to speak, and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. Think about that. Think about that. When you encounter these people that just will not hear, who just will not hearken at all. Sometimes, what do you got to do, brethren? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just got to let it go. But take notice here. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 23, under verse 31. I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the heathen, and disperse them through their countries, because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes, and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. Remember? The powers that be are ordained of God. And God has uh, allowed first Trump and now Kamala Harris here in America for judgment upon this nation. And I polluted them in their own gifts. In that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb that I might make them desolate, to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land, for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill, and all the thick trees, and they offered their their sacrifices and there they presented their provocations of their offerings there also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings then I said unto them what is the high place whereunto ye go and the name thereof is called Bama unto this day wherefore say unto the house of Israel thus saith the Lord God are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers
and commit ye whoredom after their abomination, abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, and when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Verses 12 on to verse 20. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? A Pharisee is someone who elevates tradition over scripture. Hence, a Catholic. Okay? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth Come forth from the heart. And they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. <clears throat> Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, walketh wisely. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. And what is understanding? To depart from evil. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Go to Luke now, chapter 6. Luke 6, verses 43, on to verse 45. For a good tree bringeth forth, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Yeah. 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 And going back to Matthew chapter 15. And Jesus said, 16 on to verse 20, are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out of into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. 
But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, verses 20 on to verse 24. See, you can't trust your own heart. Because what? The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who doth know it? Jeremiah 17, verses 10 and 11. Let's, let's go there very quickly. Very familiar verses unto you. They ought to be. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, excuse me. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Okay? Now go to 1 John chapter 3, verses 20 on to verse 24. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Love one another meaning your own brethren, sisters of the church of the living God. Okay? And he that keepeth His commandments, and he that keepeth His commandments, dwelleth in Him, and He in Him. And hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He hath given us sealed unto the day of redemption, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Okay? But now look at uh, 1 John 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. These things have I written unto you that ye, unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Verse, uh, verse 24 in 1 John chapter 3, again. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. You are of, of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. You have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you. Okay? So let's continue in 1 John 5. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now, now think about this. Remember how we looked at Abraham acting as intercessor? And if we pray according to his will, how do you learn what his will is? By reading the scriptures. By eating that which he give thee. You know, uh, you ought to esteem his word more than his necessary food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The authorized version of the scriptures, this is your food. Okay? This is what you are to feed on. Okay? We know this. They don't. They don't. Go now to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. <laughs> Luke 
verses 34 on to verse 35. And so pertinent onto that beautiful email sent to me by a beloved brother. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, lamenting. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings and he would not. You feel like that sometimes, don't you? <laughs> like that email sent to, a, sent to me by a beloved brother. Yeah. You want to scream at him. He's like, What's wrong with you? Those who will hear, let them hear. Those who will forbear, let them forbear. But they are a rebellious house. We can't dwell on the ones who refuse. Yeah, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you feel sorry. You know when uh, we we got together with my family here. Um, what, what day is it today? Monday. Um, we got together with them Saturday, and oh, we felt we were so out of place there so out of place but yes it it can cause you to be quite sorrowful knowing the state that our world is in and just like our dear brother had said um, <laughs> it's just gonna get worse it's just gonna get worse go to Psalm 81 go to Psalm 81 Psalm 81 Psalm 81 verses 8 under verse 16 Hear O my people and I will testify unto thee O Israel if thou wilt hearken unto me there shall no strange God be in thee neither shalt thou worship any strange God I am the Lord thy God, which brought, th brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts' lusts. Unto their own hearts' lusts. Excuse me. <laughs> and they walked in their own councils. Does God have pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they would repent? God is it just God. Their damnation is just. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsel. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should have subdued their enemies, and turned my, my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Verse 12 again. 
So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust. And they walked in their own counsels. Is that not what is happening today? It is. It is. It is. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 29 on to verse 44. Oh, that they were wise, feared the Lord, that they understood this, and departing from evil, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock, capital R, had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock. Difference in the capitalization there. Yeah. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Think about those who call themselves Christians, who look just like the world. There's no separation, there's no distinction. No distinction. Oh, the only distinction is that they're actually kind of worse than those of the world. Have you ever thought about that? You know, the ones that go to the church building thing? Okay? Have you ever considered that they are worse? Because they're purporting to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet, in works they deny Him. And I'm telling you, the Lord saves you, something's going to change around here. Okay? When you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, you come to him broken of your self-righteous pride, contrite, sorry that your sin put him on the cross. You come to him in fear. I owe you. I, I, I'm, I'm wicked. I'm going to hell. It says so here. Uh, Lord, Lord, save me. May the Lord save you. See, you come to him on his terms. And when the Lord saves you, things are going to change. And when you got these devils telling you that they, a change doesn't come, um, you're still saved, okay? Those who dispute the changed life after salvation, they're lost. You're lost. You have your mere belief, but no change. Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons, the cruel venom of asps. Oh, like the red dragon, Satan, the cruel venom of asps, serpent. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Let them alone. Go to the next one. And if there isn't a next one within your locality, pray. Pray. Make intercession. Stand in the gap for as long as we have. Because ultimately, what does it say there? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. 
not unto us. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Ooh, sounds Catholic to me, doesn't it? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now I, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. I make alive. I wound, I, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. Ooh. You're not saved. You're rebelling against the Lord. Or even worse, think you are and you're not I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me woe be to you woe be to you I pity you. I truly do. I pity you. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hosea, the son of Nun. God's vengeance is coming on these people, dear brethren. If anything, like I said, we are to pity them. We are to pity them. And to be as intercessors, that the Lord's will be done. Because we do not know who the Lord is going to save today. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. As my, my wife would say, Habakkuk. <laughs> Habakkuk chapter 3. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, upon Shigianoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid, O Lord. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Oh, beg your pardon, excuse me. God came from Timan, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Silah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea, that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy bow was made quite naked, According to the oaths of the tribes, even thy words, Silah, 
Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation onto the neck. Selah. Thou didst strike through with his staffs the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. When I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hen's feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instrument. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The God of my salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the God of salvation. <laughs> yeah, brethren, it, it, it gets really hard. It gets really hard. But praise the Lord, for he is just, and he will do what is right. But until that time come, let us stay steadfast, staying within the scriptures, adhering our lives to the scriptures. And whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. So it's why it's so imperative that we all be guided of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, in these days. Especially to when the Lord opens up doors for you to witness unto people. And like I said, you just walking outside your door, doing your normal everyday thing. Hmm. You're of the church of the living God. You have God living, living within you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay, they're going to know this. Remember, you are his ambassador, minister of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation. Take comfort, brethren. Their foot will slide in due time. Their time is coming. Their time is coming. But until then, don't forget to pray for one another. Don't forget to pray for one another. Make intercession. Because while we are still here, his wrath is not going to come upon this earth. But like I said, as you know, Church of the Living God, once we're out of here and all you lost people and you devils, wow. What kind of a fool must you be to want to stay and 
Anyway, that's going to be it for this quick little video here, brethren. Um, got other videos coming. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, brethren, for your prayers. Um, we are keeping so many of you in our prayers. Um, also, too, I wanted to thank you all for praying for my wife as far as the situation with her feet because her feet are improving. Thank you. The Lord has answered prayer. And um, just uh, remember, brethren, remember, pray for one another. Make intercession. And don't let yourself get taken up when people ignore or people actually hate on you because you are saved and they are lost. Their foot will slide in due time. Keep your ears open. Sooner or later we're going to hear come up hither. Then we'll finally be, be able to meet each other. <laughs> But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope, hope, I hope this helps. I hope the uh, Lord be magnified. The Lord be magnified and glorified. That's, that's all that's important. Thank you very much for watching this if you do. We will see you in the next video.